LNG's marine fuel is growing faster than ever. It's become the leading alternative fuel for shipping, thanks to its lower emissions, wide availability, and increasing infrastructure. This was the subject of my presentation at General Global Forum held in Lima, Peru last month. This flagship event brings together every year global and Latin American LNG leaders, technical experts, regulators, and decision makers to talk about LNG key topics. This video is brought to you by LNG School. I will share more about it later in this video. But now, let's jump into the presentation. And if you want a copy of the slides, you can download them for free via the link in the description below. Hello, everyone. I'm Mustafa Zahaf. I'm ship's captain. I've been commanding the one of the biggest LNG ships in the world for the past two years. I've been in the LNG shipping industry for almost two decades. And in parallel, I'm sharing my knowledge and news on LinkedIn. I'm doing YouTube videos as well about LNG. I'm sending newsletter weekly about LNG as well. So anything I'm doing is around LNG. In today's presentation, we'll talk about the LNG as fuel and LNG bunkering. So we start with the basics first, and then I will move to regulations, and a bit of technical information, and we'll end with a couple of numbers and uh, figures about the LNG bunkering around the world. In our agenda today, as I said, we'll start with history definition. We'll talk about the uh, concerns about the emission from ships, how LNG is complying with these regulations, and we'll describe briefly the LNG bunkering modes. And at the end, we'll see a couple of numbers about the LNG bunkering flow in the world. As I said, I will start with basic information. What does it mean, bunkering, and from where the bunkering term came? In the past, the ships were fueled by coal. Coal was stored in containers called bunkers. Transferring this coal to these containers, the operation was called bunkering. Fast forward, the coal was uh, replaced by fuel oil, marine gas oil, and we still are using the fuel oil bunkering, and now we have the LNG bunkering. The LNG bunker tanks are installed either outside the ship's hull in cylindrical tanks. As you can see here, we have this bulk carrier. She has energy tanks outside or internal tanks, such as for the container ships. You can see clearly in this chart that the LNG bunkering volume is growing uh, over the years. In January 2023, the LNG volume bunkered was only 100, around 160,000 cubic meters. Fast forward two years and a half later, in August 2025, 800,000 cubic meters of LNG was bunkered. It's five times the volume of LNG in a period of two years and a half only. And this is without counting the LNG used as fuel by LNG ships. So as you know, the LNG ships, they are using their cargo as fuel as well. We have the boil of gas daily between 0.15 to 0.07% of the total capacity of the ship is burned in the uh, ship's engine. So the volume transferred or the volume bank at this 800,000 cubic meter without counting the LNG used by the LNG ships. In the international scheme, we have regulations that govern this marine pollution by ships. IMO, the International Maritime Organization, has a convention called MARPOL, Marine Pollution Convention, which regulates the pollution from ships, pollution from sewage, garbage, oily water, and emission from diesel oil or marine fuel used by ships. The MARPOL convention limits the emission of sulfur oxide, nitrogen oxide, particulate matter, and uh, even has strategy to push the reduction of CO2 and green gas house. This is for the international. And we have a regulation which is regional. For example, for the European ports, they have stronger and stringent regulations regarding the sulfur emission, greenhouse gases, and even now, we have this uh, emission trading system for ships calling European port and sailing from European ports. And we have the uh, alternative fuel infrastructure regulations as well. So we go briefly through these uh, key emissions. As I said, we have the sulfur oxide is the oil gases when the marine fuel 
or when the sulfur is burned in marine fuel. And it causes acid rains, human respiratory problems, and contributes in environmental acidification. The second one is the nitrogen oxide, same as a group of gases formed from nitrogen during combustion at tight temperature. And of course, it leads to acid rains, ozone formation, and respiratory issues as well. The third one is the particulate matter. It's the tiny solid particles that are generated from incomplete combustion from the uh, heavy fuel oil, and it causes major human health concern. And of course, the carbon dioxide, the, the main greenhouse gas from fossil fuel combustion, from marine uh, diesel oil, from fuel oil, and even from LNG, which contributes to global warming and climate change. The map you see here, the blue color areas are emission control area, which has stringent regulation about the emission from ships. Let's say if I'm sailing around the world, I have regulation for sulfur content in the marine fuel. If you are entering to this area, let's say US coast or Canadian coast, you need to change over to another fuel which has lower sulfur content. And this is how the IMO has been pushing to reduce the uh, sulfur content in this marine fuel. Before 2012, the sulfur content globally, the ships were using 4.5%, whereas in the emission control area, whenever you are onto in this area, they have been using 1.5% content of sulfur. Fast forward, after 2020, IMO pushed to reduce the sulfur content to 0.5 globally, whereas in the emission control area, let's say if you are entering the Mediterranean Sea, you need to change over to fuel oil with sulfur content less than 0.1. As you can see, the European ports are the early adopters. Since 2010, they have adopted regulation to reduce the sulfur content in the marine fuel. And the LNG, since the beginning, was uh, complying with this regulation because there is no sulfur content in the LNG. A quick word about today's sponsor, LNG School, which is actually my project. LNG School will be the first set of courses designed to make LNG shipping simple. From operations to cargo handling to real-life decision-making on board, it's built to help you level up your knowledge and also level up your career in LNG shipping. Whether you are a aiming to join the LNG sector, already working in LNG company, an industry professional, this school is made specifically for you. Right now, there is very little structured LNG learning available online, and that's exactly why I'm building LNG School. A clear, practical, hands-on learning path designed to take you from the basics all the way to advanced LNG shipping operations. The waitlist is now officially open. Join using the link in the description below. And now let's go back to the presentation. So here the comparison between the ULSFU. ULSFU is the uh, ultra low sulfur fuel oil used in the emission control area with uh, sulfur content less than 0.1. And we have the LNG. So for the sulfur oxide, even the ULSFU is meeting the IMO regulation the LNG zero SOX emission. For the nitrogen oxide, let me just come from here so you can see. So for the uh, nitrogen oxide, the ULSFO still generates significant NOx, whereas the LNG is up to 85 to 90% lower NOx emission. For the particulate matter, considerably higher than the LNG, LNG negligible particulate emissions. For the carbon dioxide, even the, if I can say the greener, marine fuel compared to the heavy fuel oil or very low sulfur fuel oil, there is no CO2 reduction and LNG still is cleaner than the other fuel oils with 20 to 25% reduction in the CO2. Here in this map has the figures for August 2025. You can see the major hubs of LNG bunkering. If we take the four hubs where the LNG, most of LNG was bankrupt, we have Rotterdam, Gibraltar, Singapore, and the Action. These four ports are connecting one route for container ships. So the container ship they load from Asia, let's say in the Action, and discharge their cargo in Europe, stopping in Singapore and Gibraltar or Algeciras. These container ships are 350 meters 
400 meters. Big ships, they require large amount of fuel oil, which means large amount of LNG. This is why we see that these hubs have the major of LNG bunkering operations. You can see clearly that in the green color that the container ships, they adopted early the uh, LNG as fuel, and they have the most of LNG bunkered on container ships. This is 350 meters uh, container ship. You can see the LNG fuel tank in the uh, yellow color, how large this LNG tank compared to the, to the ship. These tanks, they can hold 15,000 to 20,000 uh, cubic meter of LNG. Large ships require large LNG as fuel, and this uh, quantity needs large LNG bunker barge. And we can see that we are requiring larger LNG bunker barge, 14,000 cubic meters, and to up to 20,000 cubic meters. In June 2023, not all the bunker barges have been used totally. Fast forward, August 2025, all the bunker barges have been fully utilized. When I say average utilization is four operations in a single month. Each bunker barge has been used more than four times or the operation, they carried out operations four times in a single month for the full fleet of LNG bunker barge. Here a brief illustration to show you how the LNG is used as bunker. So the LNG is taken from the tank, it's evaporated, compressed, and sent to the uh, engine room or to the engine at 300, 200 bar. And the boil of gas is taken as well, heated and used as fuel for the uh, dual fuel generators and for boiler to produce steam. We'll talk briefly about the uh, three LNG modes or three LNG bunkering modes. We have the truck to ship. LNG bunkering, so you bring the ship alongside and you bring the LNG tracks and you supply LNG to this ship. But of course, it has advantages and limitations. So it is flexible and mobile, lower initial investment, but it has limited transfer rate, 50 to 100 cubic meter per hour, and requires multiple tracks for larger bunkering volumes. The most used one is the bunker barge to LNG fuel ship. And as well, it has advanced higher transfer rates and can serve large vessels and is very flexible. So the bunker barge can go alongside whenever the ship is loading or discharging and do the bunkering, or whenever the ship is waiting at anchor, the bunker barge can go alongside and supply LNG to this dual fuel ship. But it requires investment and dedicated LNG bunker barge. And now all the shipyards are fully booked so if you order LNG bunker barge, it takes time for the ship to be delivered. The third one is the terminal to ship bunkering operation. You bring the ship to the uh, export terminal or import terminal with a dedicated GT for LNG bunkering. It has very high transfer capacity, is economical for ports already importing or exporting LNG, but it's fixed location and high capex and you need to bring the ship alongside only for LNG bunkering. It requires pilotage, tags, and it has extra fees to receive the uh, bunker alongside. Here, the source of LNG for this LNG bunkering operation. You can see clearly that in red color that the source of LNG is from import terminals, not from export terminals. So these import terminals, they are bringing LNG with LNG ships. They receive it, discharge in their tanks, and reload it again on bunker barges or on uh, uh, dual fuel ships. The second source is export terminal, and uh, third one is STS operation. When I say STS operation is the bunker barge go alongside a mother ship, LNG ship, take the cargo and discharge it or bunker the uh, LNG dual fuel ship. The picture in the left side, so I took it by myself, we lifted the cargo from an import terminal and we went uh, at anchor and this bunker barge uh, was coming to us, lift the cargo at time 8,000 cubic meter, 10,000 cubic meter and go to load the uh, LNG dual fuel ships. This is the LNG bunker volume by continent. So we've seen that top four uh, hubs where the LNG bunkering is uh, happening around the world is in Europe and Asia. And you can see clearly that the amount is increasing uh, in these two continents. For the suppliers, the top supplier for LNG bunkering worldwide, 
We have Shell as the top supplier in different ports, different continents. We have Fuel LNG in Singapore, Total Energies, SIPG in China, and the fourth supplier, Seaside LNG in the United States. For the receiver, of course, as I said, the top receivers are all container ships companies. CMSCGM, container ship company. Uh, MSC, container ship company. C-SPAN as well, Hapagloid as well. The top four are all container ship companies. So you can see that most of the energy bunkered in uh, container ships. And the fifth one is Carnival Corp. Is, it is cruise shipping company. Here in the Americas, top three LNG banking hubs, we have the Garden City Terminal, Georgia in the United States, Port uh, of Canaveral as well in the United States, and third one, Kingston in uh, Jamaica. The LNG bankering uh, volume in the Americas, as you can see, the United States is leading the, the countries with the most uh, of banking operation throughout the years. And you can see in blue color, yes, LNG bankering in Canada now, with C-SPAN, they start uh, LNG bunkering in Vancouver, British Columbia. And in Americas as well, the container ships are leading the ships type for bunkering LNG, followed by the cruise ships as well. And for the suppliers in the Americas as well, Shell is top suppliers, followed by Seaside LNG and the other suppliers. And that's it. Thank you very much. If you want to go deeper into LNG operations, you might check out this video here for a full step-by-step -step guide on how LNG loading works. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.